Hey guys, today we're back with another video covering the 2023 Police or Pursuit Dodge Charger. I've also covered previous generations of Dodge cop cars in the past, so you can check those videos out in the description. Each of these vehicles are only available for purchase by the various agencies, so regular people like us can't buy them new, only used when those agencies decide to get rid of them and sell them. This is the final year offered for the current generation, first introduced in 2014 as a 2015 model. So let's get right into it. So Dodge began offering a Pursuit Charger and Magnum back around 2006, when the first generation was released, and they've continued with the Charger ever since. It's officially called the Dodge Charger Pursuit in the US, and goes by the Dodge Charger Enforcer in Canada, and these have been one of the best-selling sedans among all the law enforcement vehicles. Unlike the civilian Chargers, there aren't trim levels. There are just two models, a V8 rear-wheel drive and a V6 all-wheel drive. The starting price for the V6 Pursuit is around $37,000, which is much higher than a regular Charger V6, where the base 2022 SXT comes in around $32,000, and the V8 Pursuit model is around $39,000. As for the exterior, this Pursuit looks like the regular 2015 and up base model Chargers, with a low and sleek grille and hood, relocated C-pillar, and rear racetrack taillight. There's also a push bumper. A-pillar spotlights, built-in wigwag lights, new LED daytime running lights, a roof-mounted light bar, rear deck-lit emergency lights, and custom wraps are all available directly from Mopar. Some of the images might have decals from a certain year, but the look hasn't been updated like some of the civilian models. For example, the GT and UP have a performance fascia and hood standard as of 2019. This year, Dodge is offering 14 colors on the Pursuits. Most of them were offered on the civilian chargers and are likely never ordered, like Go Mango, for example. There are some Pursuit-only colors, like Electric Blue, Midnight Blue, Michigan State Police Blue, and Ranger. Next up is the powertrain. Unfortunately, as we expected, absolutely nothing has changed for years in this regard. 2021 was the last year of substantial change, where the 8-speed torque flight automatic transmission was added as standard for both the V6 and V8 engines. So before that, all the pursuits still use the 5-speed automatic. So the V6 engine is offered with all-wheel drive only. Under the hood is the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 with 300 horsepower and 264 pound feet of torque. Fuel economy is rated at 18 city, 26 highway, and 21 combined. The other engine is the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 engine, and that's only available with rear wheel drive. So, just like the regular Chargers, there are no V8s offered with all wheel drive, and that has been the case since 2014, where the last RT all wheel drive was offered. The Hemi's got 370 horsepower, 395 pound feet of torque and fuel economy ratings of 16 city, 25 highway, and 19 MPG combined. The curb weight is nearly identical for both models, 4,338 pounds for the V6, and 4,356 pounds for the Hemi. And the Hemi also has a high-speed engine controller. The V8 has a 220mm rear axle, while the V6 is a slightly bigger at 230mm, and the rear axle ratio is 3.07 on the V6, and 2.62 on the V8. These police cars do get many enhanced and upgraded features over a civilian charger, but to many folks, they either wouldn't care about them or wouldn't notice them. So for example, there's a 220 amp alternator and 800 CCA AGM battery, which are more heavy duty. An engine oil cooler standard along with electric power steering. The brakes are the heavy duty BR9 package, which have massive 14.5 inch front and 13.8 inch rear vented rotors with dual piston calipers up front with larger brake pads. The steel wheels are 18 by 7.5 inches with 225 60 R18 BSW performance tires, but there is an optional upgrade up to 245 55 R18 tires. There's a heavy duty suspension which includes performance tuned and low leveling Nivamat shocks, bigger front and rear stabilizer bars, one piece lower control arms on the V8 all wheel drive, and two mode electronic stability control. Also, here's a quick shot of all the packages that are available. Now moving inside, there's a column mounted automatic shifter with auto stick, heavy duty cloth bucket seats with a vinyl rear bench and six way power driver's seat, and a patrol package wiring prep package, which includes front and rear wiring harnesses and power distribution center. The seats are a bit different as they have cutouts in the side bolsters for utility belts that the officers wear, and they still come with side airbags. Otherwise, there aren't many fancy features or nifty items as these vehicles are used extensively and they just aren't necessary. The standard screen is a 7-inch Uconnect display with integrated voice command, but there is the option of the 12-inch screen. There's also a media hub with two USB and auxiliary inputs, and a custom-defined color display monitor. 
There's also a six-speaker sound system. Those Uconnect systems are more robust than the civilian versions, as they are engineered and tested to work with the officer wearing gloves, and in extreme conditions like minus 40 degrees Celsius or 85 degrees Celsius. Some standard safety features include advanced multi-stage airbags, side thorax airbags, brake assist, park sense rear park assist system, park view rear backup camera, rain brake support, and secure park, which prevents idling cars from being driven without the key fob inside the vehicle. The officer protection package also comes standard, designed to increase officer awareness when parked, as the charger uses the park sense rear park assist system, the rear backup camera, and the rear cross path detection, which alerts the officer if there is movement or a person behind the vehicle. The sensors will activate, sound a chime, and all the doors lock, the front windows roll up automatically, and the taillights start flashing. Now we can check out which states, provinces, and countries use the Charger Pursuit. Keep in mind this is certainly not an exhaustive list. So starting in Canada, they're used by the Calgary Police Service, Ontario Provincial Police, in Montreal, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and PEI. In US, the list is longer, as starting in 2013, around 20 states signed up to use this vehicle, while about 18 others went with Ford. Some of the various places and jurisdictions they are used in would include Arkansas, Colorado, California, Florida, New York, Idaho, Kansas, Michigan State, Dallas, and Washington to name a few. Now the final thing I want to cover today are the performance numbers of these chargers. Each year the Michigan State Police does a series of grueling on-road tests that look at various aspects, such as acceleration, top speed, braking, and the vehicle dynamics. All police departments throughout the country then review the tests before they decide on which cars to order for their fleets. It's still early and the official 2023 documentation hasn't been published yet, but I do have the preliminary test results, so I'll be working with those figures and stats. Some of the competition includes the Chevrolet Tahoe, Chevrolet Silverado, the Charger V6 and V8, the Dodge Durango V6 and V8, three different Ford Police Interceptor utility vehicles including an EcoBoost model, the Ford F-150 EcoBoost, and the recently added Ford Mustang Mach-E. So that's pretty much all the police vehicles available in the United States right now. The first test was acceleration and top speed. Both the Chargers are second in top speed at 140 miles per hour, second only to the Ford Police Interceptor's EcoBoost's 148 mph. For the 0-60, to Dodge used to be king here, but now the Charger with the Hemi V8 places fourth with a time of 6.01 seconds, behind the three Ford vehicles. The next test was vehicle dynamics around the Grattan Raceway track in Michigan. Each vehicle did four laps and their average was taken. The Chargers fared very well here, both the V6 and the Hemi being able to finish a lap in around 96 to 97 seconds, with the Hemi being faster at 1 minute and 36 seconds. This time around, that Hemi was second, behind only the Ford Police Interceptor EcoBoost once again, which had an average time of around 1 minute and 35 seconds, so that's about a second faster. The final metric was deceleration and braking using 60 to 0 mile per hour stops and then taking the average deceleration rate. The Charger did very well again, needing 129.6 feet to stop from 60 to 0. That was good enough for third place behind the Chevy Tahoe rear wheel drive and the Mustang Mach E all wheel drive. So, overall, the Charger Pursuit is still one of the most capable police vehicles out there after all this time, and that's why it's so widely used. If you are interested in purchasing one, they're sold after being used by the agencies, usually at around 150,000 miles, and they aren't typically too expensive when compared to similar civilian chargers due to the beating that they receive. So that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching and hopefully you enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe for all your Mopar content, and I'll see you all in the next video.